welcome to everyone. You're listening to the Suat Podcast from St Edward's in a sunny Channelton. Hello and a big welcome to the podcast from Bony High Primary Academy in Burntwood. Hi everyone, we are St Luke's Academy in Endon. Welcome to our podcast. Hello and a big welcome to the podcast from Burton Primary Academy in Burton. Hi everyone, we're St Paul's First School in Coven. And welcome to our podcast. We can't wait to get started. Hello and welcome back for episode three of the SUAP podcast from Staffordshire University Academies Trust. My name is Richard and I'll be your host for another selection of amazing recordings from our children and our staff. Staffordshire University Academies Trust includes schools from all over the county of Staffordshire and each episode of the podcast features contributions from just a few of those schools. As you've already heard, this episode includes recordings from five schools, St Luke's CE Academy in Endon, St Paul's CE First School in Coven, Boney Hay Primary Academy in Burntwood, Purton Primary Academy in Purton, and St Edward's CE Academy in Cheddleton. All of the recordings you're about to hear were recorded independently by the children and staff of the schools. So a huge thank you to everyone involved for your hard work and creativity in sharing your contributions for this episode of the show. I know that everyone listening is going to love hearing what the children have to say. You're listening to the Suat Podcast. I'm your boy Yasmin. This episode is a really special one. We have timed its release to coincide with Anti-Bullying Week, which runs from the 15th to the 19th of November. This year, the theme for the week is One Kind Word, which we absolutely love. I'm just going to read a couple of parts from the Anti-Bullying Alliance website to describe why they went with that theme. They said this, Kindness is more important today than it has ever been. The isolation of the last year has underlined how little acts of consideration can break down barriers and brighten the lives of the people around us. When we asked over 400 young people, teachers and parents what they wanted from this year's Anti-Bullying Week, the young and the not-so-young told us they wanted anti-bullying work to be about hope and the positive and kind things we can do to halt hurtful behaviour in its tracks. We agree. And we're going to really focus on the positives in this episode of the podcast. What can we all say and do to be better friends, better colleagues or better brothers or sisters? Coming up, we have the children sharing their memories of the loveliest things that anyone has ever said or done for them and of the kindest action or words that they have given to somebody else. The children sharing their self-written poems and short stories based on the one kind word theme. The children also describing how and why they've created their own one kind word artwork or posters. And also teachers and head teachers sharing their own memories or thoughts about bullying and about how SUAT schools deal with bullying situations. Plus many great anti-bullying raps and songs which we know you're going to love. To help get us started though, I'm delighted to welcome SUAT wellbeing counsellor Amy Hatfield, who is going to set the stage for us by describing what we mean by bullying and what the short and the long term effects on the children of bullying can be. The definition of bullying is an act which is intended to cause upset and or pain and is something that happens repeatedly either in person or online. The impact of bullying in the short term could include social isolation, school avoidance and not engaging in the classroom. The long-term impact of bullying can bring about feelings of low self-esteem, being withdrawn from our usual activities and friends and taking a negative self-view. Many thanks for that Amy, that was a great introduction. The theme of one kind word emphasises that our words and our actions can affect how someone else feels for better or for worse. We ask the children in our podcasting schools to share with us their memories of the loveliest, kindest things that someone else has ever said or done for them. And here is what they shared with us. When, when I first started school, Hazel, my friend, helped me fit in. When I was there, my granddad tickled me and told me some jokes. <laughs> so that made me feel happy. I got lost in the streets. 
and a lady said, do you want me to help you find your mum and dad? And she did. Thank you. Albert helped me by, by when I fall over. He helped, he took me to a teacher and the teacher gave me some eyes. When I was sad, um, all my friends came up to me and made me cheer up and all that stuff and then we played a couple of games and we respect each other my friend was kind to me when i lost a football game and my friend gave me a hug oliver shared the police car with me because he's my best friend one day i was feeling down and my friend gave me a hug because i was upset the loveliest thing someone has ever done for me was when I was upset about my granddad. My, my friend made me feel better. The loveliest thing someone has ever done for me was my brother giving me iron brew because I was down and um, he knows it's my favourite drink. Made in Scotland from Gundus. So once I had a really rough day in school and I couldn't work out a math problem, so I started to cry, but my best friend Harriet came over and helped me work it out. When I felt sad, my best friend gave me a hug. When it was the Christmas holidays, it's my birthday, but my friend Freya couldn't come. But instead, a few days later, she set up a big surprise for me to show that she cared and wanted to celebrate my birthday with me. The nicest thing that anyone has done to me is let me come to school. And the loveliest thing that ever happened to me was when my dad took me to rugby and it made me happy. One day I fell over and I was with my friend and she said, come to my house and we did a picture with paint and, and it made me really happy. So the kindest thing someone has ever done to me was when I was sad and one of my best friends gave me a hug. The loveliest thing someone has ever done is to me is that my friend from football helped me because I got winded and she helped me up. Those were really wonderful. What I particularly like is that very few of those memories were about things or gifts that the children had been given. They were more about the small things, helping a friend who's fallen over, a kind word or action from a friend when someone was feeling down, maybe. It's those small things that can make all the difference. It's not about grand gestures or expensive gifts, just showing someone else that you care about them with a kind word, a thoughtful smile or an offer of help. You're listening to the SUAP podcast. We also asked the children to make use of their creativity in bringing the one kind word theme to life for our podcast audience and they've done an amazing job of writing and recording their own poems short stories and raps here is the first set of their one kind word creations hello my name is leah from boney hay primary academy and here is my story about one kind word one kind word one kind word changes a number of things, and this is one of them. Hey, Sally, Ashley called from the bench opposite. Now, Ashley and Sally didn't exactly get along. Yes, answered Sally, looking up from her book. Ashley sauntered over with her usual crowd. When Ashley reached Sally, she came to a halt and looked down at Sally with disgust. Where did she get that jumper from? She sneered, while everyone around, surrounding her snickered. Let me guess, it was from your McDonald's Happy Meal? Everyone watching laughed. No, I just couldn't afford a branded one. Then she started to grin. Well done on your GCSE exams, by the way. What? Ashley was so shocked she instantly turned pale. Thanks, Sally, Ashley said as she sat down next to her. That's the nicest thing anyone has ever said to me. I'm sorry about all the things I've said to you. Can we start over? Sally smiled and nodded. The moral of this story is one kind word can make a big difference. Hello, my name is Andy 
Nina from Patton Primary Academy and this is my poem around one kind word. I chose friendly. Forever friends always stick together, respect all of the peers around you, inspiring them to work hard, enthusiastic about caring for your friends and family, nurturing others to be the best they can be, and don't forget to be open-minded that all people are different, love is the most important thing, and you must take care of your friends and peers around you. Oh, lovely. Why did you choose the words open mind, nurturing, enthusiastic and respectful in your poem? Because they are our school values and they are important to help people and keep them kind. Courage can be hard. Courage is sometimes tough. Courage can be useful. Courage alone is not enough. Courage is respectful. Courage can be kind. Courage shows you your brave courage is in your mind. Hi, my name's Eliza and this is my one kind word short story. There was a girl named Jasmine, but there was a big problem because nobody sat by her in the class. At break, she saw this girl named Abigail. Jasmine goes up to Abigail because she's sad. And Jasmine says a word, which is, are you okay? Do you want to play? Asked Jasmine. Yes, said Abigail. And they were friends. and this is my haiku for one kind of, work, kind of word day. How are you so ace? The best you can ever be, such a special friend. Hi, my name is Sophie and this is my haiku for one kind of word day. You are kind to what did you jump right in to help them? You are my best friend. Hi, my name's Lennon. This is my one kind of word poem. One kind of word can I help you? One kind word can make somebody's day. One kind word, are you okay? K stands for kind. I stands for I'm caring. N stands for nice. D stands for determined. Smiles are infectious, it's like catching the flu. When someone smiled at me, I caught their smile too. I spread it to everyone I knew, then the whole world got infected. Smiles are the sort of pandemic we want. I love those, thank you. Right, now it's a first for the podcast, as for the very first time, there will be content for you to see as well as to hear. If you're only listening to the podcast in the background without the video thumbnail on your screen, and as long as you're not driving, of course, can I politely request that you bring the video into the foreground now? We ask the children in our podcasting schools to create one kind word artwork and posters and then to record themselves describing their creations. Listen now and watch as we explore their one kind word creations. Love means caring for people and cheering them up and be, give them big hugs. I decided to base my artwork on the word beautiful because when I'm feeling a bit down, the word beautiful really cheers me up. I decided to base my artwork on the word lovely because I think it's nice to be lovely to people. So I just want to ask you about your post. Why have you chosen teamwork as the main word, key word? Because working together is the kindest thing to do and it makes everything easier and more fun when you are working as a team. Why have you chosen all those bright colours? They are the happiest colours and show that when people are nice to each other, the world is brighter. Um, and why have you chosen to put cheese on there? I love cheese. When they give it to me, it, it makes me happy and that's what people should do for each of us. Why have you chosen be kind as your message? Because all people should be kind.
kind because if you're kind to others, they will be kind to you. And uh, why have you chosen that picture to draw? Um, because to be happy, we all need to look after each other. Our artwork shows ha helpfulness and kindness. The hands show a symbol of kindness and helpfulness. The bright colours on the artwork show a symbol of happiness. I designed my poster like this because I want people to know that bullying is bad and so people know how to be kind. I designed this poster because I wanted I wanted people to know um, bullying is bad and it's wrong. So you should be yourself, not be a bully. I designed this poster because if you're getting bullied, then you can look at this poster and it will tell you what to do. Be respectful and always be kind. This poster all shows about niceness, like filling people's buckets, showing people respect, love, kindness, spreading joy all around the world. So you've drawn a lovely, beautiful poster of a big rainbow heart with the word considerate. Can you tell me why you've chosen to draw that? Because I'm always considerate. You are? Do you see people in help, who need help and then go to help them? Yeah. You do, don't you? You are very kind. You've chosen the word considerate. Because when my dad fell off his bike, I came and said, are you right? And he said, yeah. And then, and then I helped him up get in the house. Did you? And did your dad hurt himself? Did he? So you've also written the word love on there. Is this picture you helping your daddy on his bike? I can see that. And this is showing lots of your class friends as well, is it? Everybody. See, Harry, Harry thinks everybody is kind in this class, don't you, Harry? And I know you are a superstar at being kind to, aren't you? Well done, everyone. Those were absolutely magnificent. You're listening to the Suat Podcast. I'm your boy, Yasmin. It's time now to hear from the teachers and other staff in our podcasting schools. They are going to share their own personal thoughts on bullying, sometimes of their own experiences, sometimes about how they deal with bullying situations in their own schools. Hello, my name is Mrs Rogers and I'm the Family Support Worker at Boney High Primary Academy. It is most important to create and build security, positivity and trust within the school environment as it can have such a huge impact on a child's life and also extending to adulthood. There are many reasons for this. Some children may not have positive role models in their lives. They may not be able to trust anyone outside of school. Feeling safe is what we all as humans crave naturally. It is our job to fulfil these areas to enable the child to have a sense of belonging. If bullying occurs, whether this be at home or within the school environment, and at whatever level, the child needs to be able to feel comfortable enough to trust a member of staff so that it can be addressed. Within the school environment, a one-off incident such as name-calling can be seen to a child as bullying. This is why it needs to be discussed in detail with the children so they gain a better understanding of the word and its true meaning. Children should enjoy coming to school and see it as a positive experience. We as professionals need to make sure that this is the case. Thank you. When I was in high school, people used to bully me about the way I looked. This really lowered my self-esteem and made me think really negatively about myself. However, with the right support around me, I was able to overcome this. 
Bullying can really impact people's well-being and make them feel alone. So it's really important that if you're being bullied or if you see somebody else being bullied, that you seek help from the staff in your school. At our school, we create a caring ethos through our school values of respecting and nurturing each other. Another one of our values is open-mindedness, and this helps us to celebrate everybody's uniqueness. That's why I'm so grateful that I work in a school with a nurturing ethos that doesn't tolerate any form of bullying. At St Edward's Academy in Cheddleton, we do a lot around bullying throughout the year. This obviously features heavily in Anti-Bullying Week, but it doesn't stop there during our weekly reflection times. We talk about children's feelings, how actions can hurt, upset, cause a feeling of sadness within children what we can do to help ourselves, what we can do to help others. And I think over time we have seen a decline in the number of bullying and definitely a, a decline in the number of children that are feeling as though they have been bullied. Sometimes that, that confidence to speak out, that confidence to take that first step to helping themselves is, is the best thing. And, and by teaching the children that, um, I think that's had a big help and a big impact on the children. Many, many thanks to all of the staff who shared those thoughts and memories. Right, it's time now for more memories of the loveliest things from the children. Last time they shared the loveliest things other children had said or done for them. This time they're sharing memories of the loveliest things that they themselves have said or done to support a friend, family member or even a good cause. Let's hear what they have to say and a few members of staff have sneaked into the recordings of this section with their own memories too. The loveliest thing I've done for someone, I drawed Holly a Pokemon birthday card. Pikachu! If my friends fall over, I would hold their hand. The loveliest thing I have done is when my friend joined and I sat by him and made him happy every day. The nicest thing I have done for someone is when Taylor joined school, I played with Taylor because he was lonely and had no one to play with. Well done. The loveliest thing that I have done for someone is when I was in on a scooter in reception and Alice was crying. So I went over to her and said, don't cry, I'll give you my scooter. I tell my sister I love her. I help Dawson when he fell over. The loveliest thing I've ever done is raise money for Movember Men's Health by growing a moustache. And thank you to those people in uh, my school community that helped me raise over £400. Helping my mum and dad tidy up. The loveliest thing that I've ever done for somebody is help my friend on her first day of school. Like, um, I helped her, I played with her at, like, at break and I like I showed her around. Welcome. The loveliest thing I've ever done for my mom is make when they're busy I make them a cup of tea. The loveliest thing I've ever done for someone is to put things in a shoebox and send it to people who haven't got stuff that we have. Where do we send it to? Gambia. The nicest thing I've ever done for someone is when I surprised my auntie um, when I went to Turkey because we haven't been there for ages and no one's visited her. I love to help at home by doing the dishes. The most wonderful thing whenever my sister is looking for the doll or a piece of clothes, I always help her find it. The loveliest thing that I've ever done for somebody else is raise £2,000 for Mind, the mental health charity. I did this by completing Tough Mudder with my best friend. One day I was chosen to go to football and there were no spots left, so I let my sister go because she wanted to do it. The nicest thing that I've ever done was for a group of parents and I got together and did the park in our village, um, raised money and, and got it all with equipment set up. When my cousin Imogen was upset, I got her some chocolates and sweets. Yum. One day, my friend Tyler fell over on the playground and he was hurt and I helped him up. 
and took him to the teacher. One day, my friend Poppy got bitten by a mosquito and I helped her by getting the wet paper towel. One of the kindest things I have ever done to someone was when I had um, a toy slime and I gave it to someone who didn't have one. The loveliest thing I have ever done is that my friend was sad, so I gave her a big hug. The kindest thing I've ever done is help my mum and dad for lots of things in the house, making breakfast for her and my brother in the morning and getting ready. I feel like kindness is the best thing because it always helps people when they need. Also, when I'm on my own, I always see Rio coming ahead of me and, and saying, do you want to play? Do you want to play? I said, yeah, thank you for helping me. I think kindness means like being nice to people and helping them and not being mean to you. I think kindness is like a way of showing love and it's good to be kind because it's great to show love to everyone because everyone deserves to have kindness in their life. So. Kindness is a gift that you give to each other, even if it's a helping hand or if you're looking after someone or make sure they're upset or play with someone. Um, what I do is um, around the playground when there's not people, when there's people on their own, I go and play with them. And even though that's just a little bit, it can make someone's day and little things can make people's day. How would you show somebody that you are being kind to them? What could you do? Maybe help them cross the road. That would be very kind. Kindness is good because everyone would help you and it's a really lovely thing. So always be kind and also people in the school always help you because they're really kind. I think kindness is about like showing generous thoughts, sort of. Showing that you care about someone. Kindness means when, when somebody's being nice to you. And how does it make you feel when somebody's Happy. being kind? Happy. Thank you very much. Wow, we have some very kind and generous children in the mat. Well done, everyone. It's time now for more One Kind Word poems and creative writing. And this time, raps from the children too. Check these out. and my poem is called Kindness. Kindness is when people care and helps people when times aren't fair. When you are kind, people will repay you. Kindness is like a boomerang, you give it to someone and then it comes back to you. So that's all kindness needs, so today, do a good deed. It will really brighten someone's day up, just you wait and see. Some people don't show kindness and keep it bottled up, but really you should let it out, so try and never pout. Kindness is when people care and helps people when times aren't fair. When you're kind, people will repay you. Kindness is like a boomerang, you give it to someone and then it comes back to you. Hello, my name is Daisy from St Paul's School and here is my poem about kindness. Kindness doesn't cost any money at all. If you're kind and polite, the world will be right. Never be a bully, people will not like you. Don't let others suffer from bullying. Now you know you can help and save the world. Everyone is welcome in the world. Stop bullying. Someone has to stand up. Hello, my name is Ewa from St Paul's Coven and this is my poem about kindness. Kind is the best in meeting people to play. Never be hurtful. Don't let others suffer. Now is the time to help. Every day be kind. Stop bullying. Stand up for others.
absolutely love those. Thank you. You're listening to the SUAP podcast. The leaders and staff in SUAP schools work incredibly hard to create a safe, happy environment for the children to learn and to develop every day. The head teachers in our podcasting schools have shared their thoughts with us. How do they deal with bullying situations? How do they support any children impacted by bullying, but also work with children who engage in bullying behaviours to prevent any further incidents? Here is what they had to say. Hello and welcome to everyone who's listening to this podcast. My name is Rebecca Willington and I am the principal at Boney Hay Primary Academy and we are so excited to be taking part in this podcast on the very important theme of One Kind Word. We have values here at Boney Hay and one of them is our teamwork value and that's so important to us and we work together as a staff, as a community to ensure that there's a culture of mutual respect and kindness here at Boney Hay. Our approach to dealing with bullying is let's talk about it. We talk about what bullying is and what it can look like. We talk with the children about what to do if they think they're being bullied. Talk to someone about it. We also talk to parents and say, again, talk to us if you're worried about your child or if they're changing their behaviours or anything is causing you concern. If we're all talking about bullying, then we're in a better position to pick it up early and to deal with it sensibly and suitably when it does happen. We believe that children who bully, there's an underlying reason for that and it's important that we get to the bottom of that. So we support both any children who are being bullied but also any children who are committing that bullying themselves. Both of those children need support and need care to ensure that there aren't any lasting effects from it and that it doesn't happen again. At Purton Academy, we work to build a positive environment to ensure bullying is not tolerated. We promote an inclusive environment for all pupils, staff and families. We work with our children to help them understand what bullying is through our PSHE curriculum, assemblies, work with the NSPCC and participation in anti-bullying campaigns. More recently, we've had to have an increasing awareness of online bullying and abuse and the ways in which this can impact on our pupils. By establishing links with our local PCSOs, we have offered parent workshops, class-based sessions and our year four pupils are participating in junior cadets to raise awareness of this issue. It is important as part of our anti-bullying stance that we educate parents and raise their awareness of how they can support us. This includes parents understanding the apps and games our children have access to and the ways in which online bullying and abuse can escalate through these platforms. Our staff are keen to seek opportunities to educate children about the impact bullying can have. We aim to intervene at the earliest possible moment and closely monitor our pupils to reduce bullying as far as possible. For those pupils who feel they are a victim of bullying, it is important they speak to a trusted adult. We understand the stress and anxiety bullying can cause for families. My advice to parents would be to maintain good communication with the staff in school and act swiftly if they have any concerns about bullying. The Academy Trust supports us at Person Academy with anti-bullying policies, updates and resources to help us promote an inclusive environment. Hello, I'm Sue Machin and I'm the principal at St Edward's Academy in Cheddleton. At St Edward's we've got a zero tolerance approach to bullying but it also importantly believe that children learn how to treat others and that's a fundamental part of their learning with us at school as they grow up into kind and respectful adults of our future. We teach about bullying through our school values, so we give our children wisdom to know what bullying is, why it's unacceptable and how to deal with it. We empower the children to have the courage to speak up for themselves and for others. We teach them to be tolerant and to respect all others as unique individuals who've got strengths but who also make mistakes. We ask them to be honest and to take responsibility for their own words and actions and how they make others feel. We encourage the children to persevere when things are hard, including rebuilding relationships and wanting them to work. And we also teach the children to show compassion when people are hurt and to help others learn from their mistakes. That's how we approach bullying at St Edward's. At St Paul's First School, we adopt our care values in all that we do. 
Our attitude to bullying at St Paul's is zero tolerance. We work with our children from the moment they start school to help them to understand that we need to be kind to each other and considerate of each other's feelings. Our staff are always seeking to make our children feel safe whilst they're in school. My message to a child who is being bullied is to speak to a member of staff that they feel comfortable talking to so that we can help to sort things out as quickly as possible. Bullying places huge stress and anxiety onto parents and families too. My advice to families is always to come into school and speak to us. We have an open door policy and are always here to help. Before we finish, we wanted to reflect on the incredibly sad news that has hit the Staffordshire University Academies Trust in the last few months. On the 23rd of September, Keith Hollins, the CEO of SUAT, passed away. Mary Walker, the chair of the Trust Board, has shared the following tribute to Keith on behalf of everyone at SUAT. And I'd like to play that for you now. My name is Mary Walker and I'm really proud to be the chair of SUAT's Trust Board. I'd like to say a few words about Keith Hollins, our beloved CEO, who passed away on 23rd of September this year after a battle with coronavirus. Keith was instrumental in making Staffordshire University Academies Trust what it is today, one of the largest and leading maps in the UK. His passion and vision were amazing. And most importantly, he cared so much about the children, staff and everyone who was involved in SUAT. I know many of you will have met and known Keith and seen firsthand how dedicated he was to educating children and giving each and every child the chance to achieve. Keith was interviewed by a National Schools magazine earlier this year, where he was celebrated for his achievements with SUAT, especially in growing the trust to 20 schools. Keith, as modest as ever, insisted, it's got nothing to do with me. But those who knew him well will know that that isn't true. Keith began teaching in 1976 and achieved so many great things throughout his career. You can read more about his achievements on our website, where we're developing a special tribute section to celebrate his life and legacy. But we must make sure that we make him proud, that we build on the great things he has done and make Suat even greater. Many thanks for those wonderful words, Mary. Everyone involved in the podcast sends their heartfelt condolences to Keith's family and friends. He will be greatly missed. We're going to finish off the podcast with an original anti-bullying song from the children of Boney Hay Primary Academy. It's just brilliant and you're going to love hearing it. Please give the show a thumbs up on YouTube and share the link to family, friends and colleagues who might want to listen to it. If you'd like to share any feedback or comments, you can send us a tweet on Twitter at Suatrust. That's at S-U-A-T-R-U-S-T. The website for the trust is at suatrust.co.uk. The trust works hard every day to achieve better outcomes for all of the students and families in their schools. A huge thank you to the children and staff at St Luke's CE Academy, St Paul's CE First School, Boney Hay Primary Academy, Purton Primary Academy and St Edward's CE Academy for doing such an amazing job in recording their contributions for the show. It's over to Boney Hay now to sing us out with their own original anti-bullying song, which is just great. My name is Richard Anderson, and thank you again for joining us. We'll be back next year with the next episode of the SUAT podcast. I know it's only November, but on behalf of everyone at SUAT, I wish you a very happy Christmas, a wonderful new year, and we'll see you again in 2022. Now it's over to Boney Hay for their brilliant song. Oh, oh.
You're listening to the Suat Podcast. I'm your boy, Yasmin.